Hi Cancer, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your October 2023 Astrology. So uh, Venus is finally out of post-retrograde shadow on the 7th of October. Remember Venus was unusually long in your second hot second house of wealth and income with that retrograde was there for four months by the seventh that whole cycle is over and by the eighth she has moved into your third house in Virgo your third house is all your communication so written spoken it's even what you put up online it is also with siblings and other kin sorry that was my cat jumping around <laughs> Um, it is just what is uh, familiar to us. So it's also neighbors. It's our short trips around town, our commutes to work, you know, our daily communications. It has to do with um, whatever occurs uh, regularly. You know, if writing, for example, if you regularly uh, write a blog or if you regularly write um, something like a weekly column of some sort, you know, that would be also part of the third house as opposed to one-time publishing, which is something associated with the ninth house. So Venus just makes all your communications more diplomatic, uh, sweeter, more charming. If you have something to talk about with a neighbor, with a kin, with your siblings, cousins, this is also a really, really good time to do so because there's just an idea of uh, Venus brings people into relationship with us there's a question of wanting to cooperate so things are just um, settled much more easily this can just be you know warm uh, wonderful times with your siblings uh, perhaps you're going to do something together remember the third house ruling all communications it is our communications hub is also by the same token uh, rumors and gossip so you know perhaps if that comes up on your uh, horizon you can settle that you know very diplomatically or in a very very uh charming way now mars is going to change signs on the 12th of october mars spends six weeks in each sign wasn't retrograde at all in 2023 which is good news because at one point um the planets were almost all retrograde together except for a one day delay when venus finished and jupiter whoops let me straighten them out jupiter began so that heaviness of retrograde season is starting to lift a little bit the outer planets still remain in retrograde pluto ends on the 10th of october i'm not talking about mars anymore am i i'm off on a tangent but pluto does end on the 10th of october uh, however is still in capricorn until the end of the year and has a much longer of course shadow period but mars let me get back to Mars changing signs into Scorpio. If Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio, that happens on the 12th of October. And this is your house of romance, everything to do with children. It is your creative pursuits as well. It's just what we do for fun. So hobbies, entertainment, just pleasure pursuits. Now, Mars is a lot of energy. Mars is very uh, assertive. Mars will actually be, um, can almost be abrasive, you know, really stand up for what he believes is right. So maybe you are pursuing something creative with more um, zealousness. You know, maybe you're ready to approach people to take your creative pursuits one step further. This can also be, um, it can also affect interaction with children, be it your children or, you know, nieces and nephews, stepchildren, grandchildren, it's just all the children um, in your life. So, you know, just guard against being too abrasive. Mars sort of, because his, of his individualistic nature, might, you know, decide, have you deciding to do something or having you feel a little more irritable? There's not much patience with Mars. <laughs> Great, great energy for getting things done, for giving us that boost of confidence. But sometimes, you know, Mars imposes things or um, goes at it alone and doesn't take into account that there's other, other people involved. If this is romance, you are going to be pursuing romance more actively. Mars has a very physical aspect to it. Mars is like, you know, let's do something. Let's do something on the physical plane. There's that feeling of something having to happen. But Mars also relates to sex and sex drive. So, you know, if you are involved in a romance, um, it could be amping up that whole sexual aspect. You know, if you're beginning a romance, maybe it'll take on a, a sexual component very, very quickly. Mars spends about six weeks in each sign, so we'll be there until roughly, I believe, November 24th. Would that make sense? Yes, absolutely, November 24th. And remember, Mars is quite uh, powerful here because it is at home in Scorpio, so can very much be his uh, Martian, can I say Martian self. 
I also wanted to talk about the new moon this month. The moon is your ruler, Cancer. Um, and everything else going on here. This is home and family, your fourth house, family of origin, your uh, family of choice. It is, you know, the physical place you live. It is even, you know, your region or your homeland. So this can be um, the place you live, the people you live with, your family, or it can even concern a move, for example. It is also, um, you know, the most private part of our chart. It is the, the lowest part of our chart as well. So uh, a lot of idea of privacy and intimacy here. Now, the sun has been there since the 23rd of September. We'll be there for one month, so until the 23rd of October. Mercury now direct, went direct on the 15th of September, and out of that post-retrograde shadow on the 30th of September, moved into your fourth house on the 4th of October. So now all three of these uh, personal planets are fully direct, which is good news. There's a new moon on the 14th there as well. Now there's been focus on the fourth house. Maybe you're discussing something in terms of a family dynamic, discussing something to do with the actual place where you live. The sun really sheds light there, shines a spotlight. So it's difficult to ignore whatever is going on in terms of home and family. And Mercury there has you um, communicating a lot, maybe exploring ideas, maybe weighing your options. Uh, you know, this could be in relation to a move. Maybe you just want to change something up in your house or uh, your flat. And Mercury also relates to commerce. So, you know, maybe you are negotiating some sort of contract to have work done on your house. Maybe, you know, you're renting a new place. Maybe you're actually buying a new place. Maybe you are moving. I guarded against that during the retrograde because of the fact Mercury rules commerce and things get mixed up. But now, you know, full steam ahead, wonderful time to do so. The full moon on the 14th is at 21 degrees of Libra at the same time as the sun. That is a new moon, right? The sun and the moon together. That's why we can't see the moon on a new moon because he is too close or she is too close to the sun. The south node is at 24 degrees. So by the end of the 14th, uh, the 15th, the new moon is going to pass uh, by the south node. And then from the 16th to the 20th, the sun is going to conjunct the south node. And this is interesting to me because this is the first time there's been a conjunction between the sun and one of the nodes. And of course, by the same token, opposition to the north node, also between the moon and the south node ever since the nodes changed signs in July. So I am going to link the two videos I did on the nodes below. The, your natal north node pertains to lessons you have to learn in this lifetime. So we're always taking the tools, the abilities that we we're already comfortable with with the south node. The idea is not to stay necessarily in our comfort zone in the south node area, but to try to transmute that into acquiring capabilities of the north node. They spend a year and a half in each sign. So this is just another sub lesson on that whole 18 and a half, 19 year cycle pertaining to that overarching life lesson, if that makes sense. So um, it is, much more explained, of course, in my two videos, one on the nodes moving into the Aries Libra axis and one on your natal nodal placement. So I don't want to go into too much detail, but just do know that is the first time there is a conjunction between the sun and the south node because the sun was in actually your sign when the nodes changed. And of course, then with the moon. So a sort of check in this new moon might have almost a karmic quality to it. You might be really feeling the desire to start something new and it can just be you know in relationship in relationship in relation to self as i said just a new outlook um you know a new way of approaching things sort of like a mini resolution every time we have a new moon so um and it can pertain definitely to home and family and cancer i do apologize if there's noise in the background there seems to be work going on outside so whatever comes up with the new moon or whatever you feel like starting might not have a 100% new quality to it because there is a, an idea of karma with the nodes. Of course, again, depending on your natal nodal placement, you could be, um, you know, you could have south node in Libra natally and you are completing a whole cycle, starting a new one again. You could have north node in Libra, in which case you're halfway through a cycle. Or as I said, this is just another mini lesson on um, that overarching life lesson. 
So um, the other thing also is you can look back about 18 and a half, 19 years. That brings us to about 2004. And you can maybe get clues as to what was going on. This is on your home and family and success axis. And interestingly, as I said, the most private, intimate, uh, hidden part of our chart with the IC here on the cusp and the highest point in our chart, the mid haven right here on the cusp of the 10th house, the place where we seek public success. Um, recognition, awards, achievements, you know, moving up one step on the ladder or um, one rung on the ladder. It is also people in authority over us, people who rank us or who have a higher position over us. So again, I just do know that with the effect of that new moon so close to the south node. And of course, then the sun just, you know, continuing that conversation with that conjunction. And remember, by the same token, uh, opposing the north node. Then, of course, on the 22nd, Mercury is going to move into your fifth house, joining Mars and do all these guys. Well, I'm, how am I going to fit everybody? Oh, whoops. Let's put little mini Mercury near Mars, sort of his, I always say sort of his mischievous little brother. I just want to make sure all that fits in. Um, so the sun on the 23rd, Mercury on the 22nd, just continuing this conversation, whatever is going on, as I said, with children, with romance, with, uh, it's also gambling and speculation, or just, you know, maybe you're just having more fun times, just enjoying more moments with children. Mercury, again, is going to make you very uh, communicative, exploring a lot of ideas in that area as well. You know, Mercury likes to compare options, could be in a creative pursuit. Maybe you are into gambling and speculation with Mercury direct. Um, no problem with that there. Maybe, maybe you're exploring romantic options, who knows? But that conversation is just going to continue um, and sort of intensify with the Sun and Mercury there as well. Then, Finally, at the end of the month, there's a full moon in Taurus in your 11th house. This is your social circle, groups of friends you belong to, online communities, um, teams you're on, organizations. It is a full moon lunar eclipse as well. So, you know, usual full moon mornings are, you know, do no emotions increase, increase on the full moon. Uh, give yourself a few days before and after, maybe from the 25th to the 31st, but intensify that message even more, Cancer, because it is an eclipse. So something's going on in the shadows. You're not seeing something. And this is, of course, a sun-moon opposition between your 11th house, uh, you know, your social group, the, the idea of uh, the group dynamic, the, the hive mind, and where you are express yourself as an individual. We say the fifth house, sometimes we use the words a recreation, procreation, and creation. So there's a great idea of uh, being yourself, individuality, and here sort of conforming to the group with a, a group energy here more. So don't be pressured into, you know, choices or decisions or even taking sides on something. You know, this could be an opposition is always a question of finding balance between the two. It could also be opposition in terms of what is going on, maybe with a romantic pursuit, maybe with children, maybe with how you're expressing yourself or expressing yourself creatively, and maybe uh, the demands or the um, conformities of the group. But just do know whatever is going on and do respect, you know, those buffer dates. There's something you're not seeing or there's something going on in the shadows. Usually the real story is going on in the shadows with an eclipse, but we don't see it. So just, you know, do know that and do guard against that. I just sort of tend to lie low and observe what's going on during the eclipse. Very interesting. Observe what's going on around you because, and as I said, what seems to be going on, you know, what seems to be grabbing everybody's attention is usually not the real story. The other thing going on is this will be the last of the eclipses on the Taurus Scorpio axis. Remember how I said the nodes shifted from Taurus, Taurus Scorpio to Aries Libra? The eclipses follow the nodes. And I do explain that more in detail in, the, um, in my videos if you want the whole um, astronomy explanation. So um, this can also have almost a karmic quality to it. It is, you know, the last time in this one and a half year stay of the nodes in Taurus Scorpio. And again, do think back that 18 and a half, 19 years. Hush, puppy. 
18 and a half, 19 years to 2004, because maybe there is something, you know, you can find clues as to what was going on. I'm sorry, my cat is very insistent and wants to participate. So, you know, do look for clues there as well. As I said, almost a, a karmic quality with this full moon and this lunar eclipse. Also marking the end as much as the new moon marks, uh, you know, the start or the first check-in with the south node, the full moon is marking the end of the um, eclipses and really the end of that nodal axis. So lovely, Cancer. That is everything I wanted to tell you. Have a wonderful, wonderful month of October. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe to the channel, share this with someone else you think might find it interesting, and I will see you in the next video.